There's something about fishing that stirs up an energy and excitement from deep within us. It could come from landing a personal best fish or by helping someone land their first fish ever. It's stories shared around the dinner table and after a day on the water, the goal of learning more about the wonders that surround us. To us, it's the things that give our lives purpose and meaning. These are the stories told by the avid, the dedicated, and the passionate. This is the Love of Fishing Podcast. The Love of Fishing Podcast is proudly powered by Peter's Tackle. And sponsored by Freedom Tackle, Silver Salmon, Dreamweaver, Team Underdog Cutbait, and Grimsby Tackle. Hey everybody and welcome back to another edition of the Love of Fishing podcast presented by Peter's Tackle. I'm your host Lyle Gator and thank you again for joining us for the 10th week of the show. Guys, it's been a wild ride and and thank you for those who've tuned into all 10 episodes this year. It's been great to do the show again. Great to have a lot of great guests on. I hope that you've enjoyed the season that I've brought you this year. Hope that it helped you get through the winter a little bit easier. And I just want to express my gratitude for those who've tuned into all 10 episodes, whether it's on Spotify or YouTube. Guys, before we get in with Nick Foxcroft from the Silver Salmon, there's a few people that I need to thank for their support this year. Thank you to our supporting sponsors, Freedom Tackle, Grimsby Tackle, Silver Salmon, Team Dreamweaver, and Team Underdog Cutbait. Without any further delay, let's sit down and talk with Nick Foxcroft from Silver Salmon. He's got some details about the tournament that's coming up this year, and also some of the other amazing things that Silver Salmon is doing out in your fishing community. Let's jump in. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Love of Fishing podcast. I'm your host Lyle Gator and today I'm joined by Nick Foxcroft from Silver Salmon. He's here to talk about this year's event and also some of the other exciting things that Silver Salmon has going on in the community. Welcome Nick. Hey Lyle, good to hear from you again. Yeah, likewise sir. Uh, Nailed down a time and place finally. Uh, Nick's joined us from the Silver Salmon Mobile. He's, uh, He's on the road right now but He's made some time to uh, the event and and sort of what's what's going on this year um, on the tournament side and and also some of the things that you guys have started to do out in various communities. Uh, do you want to start maybe Nick by going through uh, what's up with with the event this year? By all means, it's uh, it's great to get back and chatting about fishing. This time of year is always uh, you know cold and miserable. I'm not much of an ice fisherman, so. Uh, Love the opportunity to chat about uh, what's up and coming. So our event is, um, we're, we're going to stick with a similar format. Uh, we found the uh, the 10 weeks there really helped with, um, you know, stimulating the industries around. And, and, you know, the guys are out fishing. We might as well we'll get them uh, competing uh, earlier in the year. Um, so pretty similar structure there. A few little add-ins that we're going to have. We're going to get a little more of the municipality support, which we're, you know, a big focus for us. So we're actually going to have a few little separate things um, added into it. Uh, (laughs) I don't want to let everything out uh, already here, but there's definitely some more exciting stuff coming down uh, down the pipe as, you know, we want to innovate and and just create more opportunity for people to uh, express their competitive passions in in, in their fishing. That's cool, man. And I know you, you can't speak too much about the details, but again, yeah, trying to do things, you know, bigger and better every year as, as the, the fishery is more well-recognized, maybe take us through some of the things you'd mentioned with the municipalities. Um, what, what's kind of been your motivation uh, to get these guys on board? Yeah, I think, I think it's going to go hand in hand with everyone, um, getting um an extra geez what's the word you know everyone just getting that much more out of their out of their summers uh so once we got started there you know i i always tell everyone we kind of silver sand was built in a time of need and and we've learned a lot and um kind of realize a lot of opportunity that's been missed over the years of how we can better our fishery so back to the municipalities 
I, I'm going to be honest, and I'm sure you know it, a lot of people surrounding the North Shore of Lake Ontario have no idea about our, our, our incredible salmon fishery, the fully biggest, you know, Lake Ontario, I'm going to quote as the world's best salmon fishery. And not only that, Absolutely. it's a sustainable fishery. And, you know, that's a big word that's, that's used in a lot of um, the world these days, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we probably have the biggest sustainable fishery, freshwater in, in the world. And, and we need to create awareness. We need to create understanding and we need to, um, get the local industry tied to this fishery to benefit from it. So we reached out to our municipalities and we offered them a lot of um, data and numbers that they weren't aware of. So, you know, we, we kind of put a, an economic uh, value on, on our salmon fishery, in these towns. And, and, and to be honest, they were, mm -hmm. they were, they were caught off guard and they were like, Nick, we love this. How, how can we help out? How can we get involved? So uh, in 2021, Mississauga, tourism we came up with this plan to help promote the charter fishery for port credit so there was a bunch of incentives and then and, and with their audience i mean our, our guys felt it. it it was great you know they, they were promoted opposed to um not not even known that they're out there they were promoted to our to yeah. uh, the communities to get involved and to participate in angling right so that, that that's when we first realized what needs to be done and we've reached out to um, several other municipalities with this somewhat of a blueprint. And, and again, they all want to get involved. So um, that's, that's one of the um, first parts of our community um, projects that, that we're looking to get out there. Awareness, getting people a better understanding of what's in their backyard, Lake Ontario, with a thriving salmon fishery. Absolutely, man. There, there's a lot of good stuff going on there. And I, I think I want to take the listeners back to the start for you with this tournament, because I, I remember I was driving up North with my dad. This is when everything was going down. And, uh, and you're like, we're going to start the biggest salmon event on Lake Ontario. And it's, it's completely during this time of despair. And you talked about the event being born in a time of need. Um, I want the listeners to know this, that, everything that you guys have built and, and done this, it, it's been for the anglers and for the community and recognizing that there was a gap, um, just fantastic work. And now to have municipalities realizing it, it, it's sort of, it's a challenge though, isn't it? Like changing, changing the discussion from uh, the, the lake and a lot of people think it's polluted and that there's no way there could be fish in it to now being celebrated um, not just by those diehard guys uh, like us, you know, that, that would, they, they, they breathe it, they eat, eat, sleep and breathe it. But, but now people dipping their toes in it and, and seeing what's out there for them. It's, it's really amazing. No, you're, you're, you're definitely right there. And, and to be honest, you know, all the uncertainties back then, <laughs> my biggest certainty and the biggest thing in my life is, is, um, is this fishery and being involved in it. And um, it just offers a, us an opportunity to really help build it um, as, you know, some of our data we got back was um, a little discouraging that, that our participation levels are dropping very rapidly, um, you know, over 400% drop since the mid nineties. You know, there's a, there's a few yeah. things um, causing that, but through this pandemic, people got outdoors, people, looked outside of the box and, and, and learned and, and started doing a lot of new things. And, and I'm going to tell you our fishery um, talking with our boat manufacturers and all that, they had the busiest. So we've got everyone's attention. Now we got to build off that. Um, and, and I don't want to have all our diehards, like you just mentioned to think, Oh, wow, the lake's going to be busier. Um, Cause I don't think that's the case. It's a big lake. But we need to fill yeah. the shoes of, uh, of the next generation. Um, you know, our, our average age demographic is, is 56 years old that participate in salmon fishing. You know, that's, that's only a few years away from extinction. So we need to yeah. uh, get the youth involved and um, innovate new ways to get them to embrace the fishery and become the next generation of passionate anglers that will pass this on, hopefully, to their next generation as well. 
for sure. There, there's some good points you've made there about recognizing your audience, obviously being the event coordinator and director, you have to see, okay, do I have a good base of people that want to participate to make it worthwhile for everybody? And obviously you do, but for myself as a participant, something that I really like about the event, and, and this is, this is something for, for people who are maybe thinking, you know, Oh, I don't know if I can compete. I fish out of a 20 foot boat and it, you don't need to be a charter guy to do this, to, to have a shot, um, to have a great shot actually. And for me and my buddies that fish tournaments, it's, it's so cool every weekend or, or whenever we have a day off, it's a lake wide event. So for myself, like I can trailer my boat, I'm looking, okay, where are the reports coming out of? Oh, Newcastle's got fish. Newcastle always has fish, but I mean, if, if, I'm, <laughs> if I'm thinking about making a weekend out of it, you know, I say, okay, guys, we're going to, you know, go here on this day. We make plans. We, we go get a hotel there, you know, get some food, that kind of thing. It, it turns into this awesome celebration of summer. And, and I, I just want people to know, like, you don't need to have a 30 foot big boat to, to do this kind of thing. No, you're, you're hundred percent correct there. And I would say as a, as I've um, got more involved with, with, with our participants, I've come to realize that I would say your boat is more of the average, you know, um, you've, you've been in a mm -hmm. lot of, um, well, not only been in one, won some pretty great events and, um, and yeah, out of those boats that show up, you get some of the big shooters with, with the bigger boats and the more equipment, but that's, that's far from what you need to get out there and get involved. Um, you know, I'm going to touch on John Manners and, and Grant, uh, John and his son, mm -hmm. bass fishing. He, John was um, really competitive in the bass and just uh, bass circuit and um, realized it wasn't very family oriented. You know, he could go out and compete, which I believe is um, the guys that do it. They need that, that, that compete. They need to go against the top anglers. I know you're one of them myself as well, um, yep. but it didn't work with his family as well. So he got into salmon fishing as it's a little more bigger boat. You can get the whole family out. And so John mm -hmm. second year salmon fishing and um, you know, he, uh, <laughs> Got the biggest fish we've seen in decades, the 42 <laughs> powder, right? And uh, and it, it's such a great story um, as it's kind of something we can all relate to father, son, man. Like, you know, mm -hmm. um, and yep. we, we, we all remember, our, you know, our, our family, our parents or our dad getting us into that. So the fact that he could celebrate uh, this monumental fish with his son and, and then walk away with 100,000 that he... Uh, his wife took her portion to do uh, a new kitchen and, uh, <laughs> and Grant there, you know, just getting old enough driving, got himself a vehicle as uh, you know, he was really involved in bringing the fish in. I, I don't know if you could script a better story. Um, no. for, uh, you know, town of Coburg that um, really is embracing their fishery a lot more in recent years to be, you know, the home of the 42 pounder now, which uh, we're definitely going to help market for them as uh it was a big deal. It really was. Yeah. The, uh, the thumbnail shot that I have for this episode is actually of John and his son. And I'm not sure the gentleman who is, who is there at the, the award, but you guys have the, the check and then the giant salmon above all your heads. And I love that so much. It's, it's iconic. Oh yeah. That counselor bureaus there was, uh, you know, as, as, as the town was, um, excited for this for this moment you know they they came down and participated in the 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 check being awarded and it was celebrated mm -hmm. i mean there there were several media outlets there to help um share this this incredible story um and that fish is it was taken from the actual fish so you know we just uh we use that in a few little props here and there it hangs in port credit for people to take their own picture with um because a fish like that needs to be celebrated it really does it's awesome man so as far as this year goes, you know, you can't get too much into specifics. You said same format, 10 weeks. Uh, do you happen to have dates already? Yeah. So we're going to start this year on June 17th, and then uh, we're going to wrap up on August 27th. All right. Yeah. So lots of opportunity there, depending on, you know, whether, whether guys get their boats in that early or not, or, you know, whenever you have, have time to do it 
just just a brief outline of the rules it's not like a like a tournament where you blast off on one day and you have to fish certain hours right you can fish anytime yeah no this is this event is designed around just everyone getting out there fishing at their own speed but um all reaching for that um hundred thousand but also you know it, it's a way to to get your name in the lights most people won't say it that you know that's what drives them to to, to fish but it definitely doesn't hurt when they get to celebrate their catch <laughs> with the communities and uh and have that opportunity to um not be the one that's telling a fish tale but they actually got their name in in the lights there to um yeah to help show everyone what they've done yeah accomplishments yeah, when you walk the walk. I know <laughs> when I was down at the dock a few times this past summer, uh, we'd have guys, you know, that that were fishing out of Port Dalhousie, which is my home port, and just saying to each other, like, okay, we got to get one for the South Shore. You know, like, we're, we're almost our own kind of group and <laughs> trying to represent the, the whole South Shore because the fishing is so great on, on the North Shore of the lake. And every year there's fish that are caught on the South Shore. So yeah, really bringing in that community and, and uh, you know, if you work together with, with different boats out there, it can be a lot of fun uh, when everyone's on, on the, the chase together. Oh, definitely. Yeah, no, we had, we had, we had a few guys um, out of the South shore this year and uh, you know, the St. Catherine's game and fish does events kind of when your fishing's best. So they mm -hmm. are, uh, you know, you guys still have that element of, of, of getting, um, you know, exciting catches and, uh, and being celebrated as well. But you're right. The North shore does seem to hold them a little bit longer in the summer. Yeah. But it's uh, you never know. It could change as a, uh, as a 42 pounder in June. I, I never really thought it was even possible, you know, as, as no. a type <laughs> of girl. So as, as things just happen, I'm sure the South shores do for, um, you know, a special catch as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and you'd mentioned the St. Catharines game and fish and just those different events. It uh, it's one of those fisheries that can be so great, um, you know, at one point and then it, and then it shifts around and it's always changing and it's always moving and every wind that blows brings fish somewhere else. So it's always changing throughout the summer. Um, and, and it's just, it's a big chase and it's fantastic. If, people want to get in contact with you either about the event or about other things that Moby Nick does. Uh, how can they do that? So, yeah, all, uh, all on our website there, you know, there, there's uh, a contact button or information, just shoot us an email or, or feel that free to reach out, you know, the phone there uh, we attend that. And, you know, I, I welcome the conversations and the questions. So um, yeah, please do any questions or concerns or, any interest in getting involved in some of the community efforts, we, we'd love to hear from you and, and give you an opportunity to get, uh, get involved in them. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. I think one thing that's really cool about what you're doing is, is you are, you're a personable individual and, you know, other events uh, sometimes it's tough to, to be able to reach out to the participants, but I know you do a really good job at making sure you talk to people, you know, get that, that ground level stuff with, with the participants in the tournament. And, uh, and I really applaud you for what you're doing for the fishery. Um, if people want to buy tickets, you had mentioned your website. Uh, there's also outlets all around the lake, correct? They're, they're going to be on board again this year. For ticket sales. I think we're mostly going to do through the website um, for online ticket purchases. Uh, we found it simplified everything. And in this day and age, people aren't too, um, comfortable getting out as much as they used to hopefully that changes quickly but um, mm -hmm. i think this year we'll mostly just be online purchasing but again if anyone has any issues um they could definitely reach out so so online ticket sales then are the are the preferred method and still weigh stations though right people can go and weigh their fish all around the lake of course yes yeah, sorry i miss i misunderstood you there yes we'll have the the same weigh station spanning from wellington to St. Catherine's Marina there. So yeah, no, we, um, we want to give everyone an opportunity to be able to fish out of the local port and, and wave fish in, if not their local port as close as possible to it. Perfect. What's the website again, for those that don't know? SilverSalmonChallenge.com. Wonderful. Nick, I thank you for your time and we'll see you out on the water soon. 
our spring fishery is going to kick off here in Niagara shortly, and uh, it will be a much awaited start to the silver salmon event. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Dyle. Certainly a lot of great things happening on the lake, whether it's between nonprofit clubs all around the lake doing salmon stocking, running smaller tournaments, and now some of the heavy hitters here like Silver Salmon stepping up and doing things in their community, running a great tournament for guys to compete in. Uh, we got a great scene on the lake, and I'm just excited to see where it goes, you know. Uh, being a younger guy, I think uh, our generation has a, a lot to step up on to keep things going, to keep the spirit alive of this fishery. And I'm looking forward to fishing this event this year for sure. I'm hoping to make the board this year. In the three years that the tournament's been on, I have not placed. But I have a good feeling that with a bit more fishing time available for me, that might come to an end. So looking forward to the event. I hope that you are too. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to either myself or Nick. I can point you in the right direction as best I can. Now it's that time of the show where we do our weekly giveaway. This week's giveaway is brought to you by Silver Salmon. So as part of the show, Silver Salmon has generously sponsored this week's episode. They're going to be giving away a single ticket. So to enter for this ticket, all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel if you're listening on YouTube. If you're listening only on Spotify, head over to the YouTube channel and hit subscribe and drop a comment on what you think this year's winner is going to weigh. And we'll go pounds and two decimal places. So so make your predictions. How big do you think the fish are going to be? Last year, obviously, that 42-pounder was a giant. We'll see if this year they're going to be as big. And as always, guys, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Love of Fishing podcast. I can say that it has been an absolute joy to bring you this season. And while there won't be any episodes coming out for a while, until then, don't forget to get outside and go fishing. Peace.